day in the classroom. Okay. <laughs> During the Tokugawa era, around 1650, in the Sakaido province of ancient Japan, there fam lived a famous and well-respected samurai by the name of Saikohu Matsu Matsuyama. He had a beautiful young daughter by the name of Jushin. Everyone say aw. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> meaning gentle spirit. And we all know you have a gentle spirit, right? Okay, that's what I've heard from Sensei. Okay, <laughs> during that historical time period, women were not allowed to train in the martial arts. <clears throat> However, being a doting and loving father, Saikahu would let his daughter sit quietly on the edge of the tatami as he practiced jujitsu techniques. Practice, do a technique. Now, of course, in ancient Japan, when you practiced jiu-jitsu techniques, you didn't worry about the uke because uke was probably some serf who, you know, whose termination would not be missed. And so if he was permanently injured or killed by the samurai, life went on. But we're not going to do that. Okay, fine. Very good. Beautiful. Okay. <coughs> Saikohu would let his daughter s sit quietly on the edge of the tatami as he practiced jiu-jitsu techniques. She would watch every one of his move, move, movements intently. Every day after he left, okay, leave. <laughs> Give him a big hand. Okay, okay. Um, every day after he left, Jushin would slowly go through the motions of each technique her father had practiced. Eventually, Saikohu caught on to what Jushin was doing, but since she had translated his lightning fast moves into such a smoothly flowing form that looked like a dance as beautiful as his daughter and she kept her knowledge to herself, he didn't give her dancing any thought and allowed her to continue to watch him during practice. One day, as she had done innumerable times before as part of her daily routine, there's a meadow over there, so you need to go over to the meadow and start picking flowers. Jushin <laughs> walked to a nearby meadow that had sparkling brook with many wildflowers growing on its banks. She would always pick a number of them to bring home to her father, arranged as a bouquet, because she saw that they made him happy. Unfortunately, on this particular day, two ronin spied her, picking flowers, and decided to take advantage of her. As they grabbed her to subdue her, she executed the techniques she had patiently learned from her father, come on, do something to these poor guys. Make them suffer. Break their wrist. Okay. Right. He won't have any children. Okay. Practice during hundreds of times as part of her dance routine. Mate. Her smoothly flowing... Stay on the ground. You're supposed to be wiped out. Thank God. I didn't give them too much of a prep on this. <coughs> and patiently practiced hundreds of times as part of her dance routine. Her smoothly flowing form spread up incredibly as she devastated both of her attackers within a few seconds. Jushin ran home where's, where's, as fast as she could. Saikahu, seeing her disheveled appearance, demanded to know what happened. Jushin told him of the two attackers and where she had left them in the meadow. Sokuhu immediately ran to the site found his daughter's two assailants nursing their wounds and quickly dispatched them to eternity, beheading both with a single quickly art <laughs> slice of his katana. katana. Okay. Although Saikohu was extremely upset with the incidents, as was Jushin, he hugged her and comforted her, letting her know that how proud he was of her. He also told her they never assumed that her slow dance like movements would ever manifest themselves into the effective self-defense system he used in warfare, much less that a young girl could so effectively defend herself. He could think of no greater honor than to bestow upon Ju Shin to bestow upon Ju Shin than to classify all of her slow, graceful movements as Ju Shin in honor of her name, Gentle Spirit. Okay, let's have a hand for these wonderful actors. Here. Okay. Name Gentle Spirit. It's a this nice is story. The start it's of an totally article. fictitious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta, you know, you, you gotta play the game. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> you know, like, oh, it sounds good. I want a woman to reenact the birth. No, and, and 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 you know, the, the the province is not fictitious. The the Matsuyama is not a fictitious. His first name is not a fictitious name. Putting him, I have no idea who Saikohu Matsuyama really is. If they, that person ever ever really existed, but one of the neat things about if if if. If you can write enough, if you know enough history, you can write a story about it, whether it's true or not, it's something else. But anyway, so, okay, now the real story of Jushin. Um, early in my jujitsu study with Sensei Seki, in the 60s, he mentioned in one dojo session that women of old Japan were not allowed to practice jujitsu as men were. Uh, they were allowed to practice many of the same moves, but did them slowly with another female partner in an almost dance like form as prearranged sequences called Kimi no Kata, which is where the term Kimi no Kata comes from, according to, to Seki. Okay. Um, Seki also encouraged us to practice techniques slowly, as you mentioned last night, so that we would learn how to execute them smoothly. That speed would come naturally with continued practice. He also encouraged us to practice our techniques like this at home, with an, an imaginary partner, as it would improve our skill level. As part of my training, I took him seriously. Over the years, I've looked back on this tidbit of instructional or instruction or insight and wondered what aesthetic name could be given to this type of slow execution of effective jiu-jitsu techniques other than Kimi no Kata, which is a very generic term, and it's, Kimi no Kata is a whole series of prearranged forms. You're doing it with a partner. It's, it's almost dance light if, if you watch it. You know, and, the, and the two people are really doing what they're doing well. Uh, although I came up with a number of Japanese names, none of them really conveyed the idea of the slow movement uh, of the art while retaining all the physical, attitudinal, and philosophical elements that go into the art of jiu-jitsu. Uh, this problem has bugged me for years, and I just couldn't come up with a name. Um, I wanted to come up with a simple name that conveyed these ideas within the physical framework work of combining jujitsu techniques together into different sequences where one technique flowed smoothly into another as you practice defending yourself against an imaginary attacker or several attackers in the spirit of jujitsu. Then, 2013, uh, I, I started writing my seventh book on jujitsu, which is they're editing it and I still don't know when the photo shoot is but that will be coming up. One of the things I was looking for, for was a Japanese term that conveyed the idea of the importance of maintaining one's physical and emotional balance while executing jiu-jitsu techniques. And that was hard to do. You know, Kazushi's out there and Sarai is out there. Um, I was able to develop, develop a list of different terms from some good resources uh, a few of which made it into my newest book in terms of maintaining your balance. However, some, sometimes inspiration comes from unexpected directions. Early in 2014, one of my short-term students, Sharon Takashita, who's Japanese, she did not speak Japanese, her parents did not speak Japanese, uh, but that's okay. I said, you know, maybe you have a relative who does somewhere. Australia of all places. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, she decided to do some research for me on this topic as well, at, at my request. One of the terms she got from one of her relatives was Jushin, meaning center of gravity. Okay. Unexpectedly, she had also found the solution to the name problem I had been seeking for decades. Um, as you know, there are different meanings for the Romanji words Ju and Shin, depending upon what kanji you're using. Okay, so even though you say Jushin, it has to, you have to have a context for it, and it can mean different, you know, Ju can mean different things, and Shin can mean different things. Um, the Shin in kanji was identical to the Jujitsu, or, okay, um, but the Ju, the Shin kanji was identical, but the Ju kanji was different. By changing the kanji f for Ju, Jushin, center of gravity, became Jushin, gentle spirit. Okay, by changing the Ju kanji. Um, 
the name is, is something I've, I've literally been looking for that name for 48 years and it's it's amazing that the that name Jushin actually came out of the name Budoshin Jiu-Jitsu because there's a Jew in there there's a Shin in there and I thought god this is cool and I couldn't figure this out and it takes a white belt student to do a little research to screw in the light bulb to make things work and a part of the lesson here is if if you if you let your students how do you say your students can be great teachers they can be great resources if you allow them to be so okay they 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 can give you all sorts of information you might not otherwise have um, anyway ended up with this term jushin um, and part of the reason for doing it other than it, it other than it's a good way to practice techniques um, Adele my wife has been taking Tai Chi for a couple three years and she says why don't you do it why don't you do it and I've watched it a couple times I just can't get into it because the footwork starts off wrong in my book I cannot stand this way it's, yeah, it's, it's to me it's, it's total off balance okay um, and I said you know this Jushin if you just put all these things together you know you can you, you if you're just talking about executing movements you're doing almost the same thing and at some point I may get old enough where I can't do this stuff but I can still go through many of the moves isn't it amazing you do this and it's actually a jiu-jitsu move you like being the person in the face but anyway uh, <laughs> so um, I've, I've been trying to put that together and come up with a name for it and Sharon Takash to solve the problem and so what I want to do today is spend some time with you uh, dealing with Jushin and, and I've talked with a couple of black belts is we as instructors think that we can only teach jujitsu if we have a black belt jujitsu okay and as and, and we end up with sometimes older students or people who don't want to learn the martial art but they want to learn the exercise or the movements okay so it's a good way I mean if, if you want to expand your instructional program and be able to offer jushin either people who just want to get their feet wet or to older people whose feet have gotten too wet <laughs> <laughs> okay, <maybe. laughs> okay. Either end, this is something you can do. Okay, and it's it's more of, a, of an, an expansion of your your instructional opportunities. It's also a great way because I've been doing this for 48 years. Okay, although I've never organized it. When I go on my walks, a couple three times a week in the morning, I'll just be walking on, going through various moves, and people really look at me strangely. Okay, I'll be walking two miles, doing all these, you know, pivoting around, and you know. And they think I'm nuts, but that's irrelevant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what? Just for pleasure. Doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, and, and and you know, my students always refer to me as being somewhat nutty anyway. So because that's the only way. Um, I learned early on in teaching. One teacher once said, "If you act, it, it, no, it goes back to the American Native American Indians or or the indigenous po population on this continent. Uh, if they had someone in a tribe who was not quite there." They, they left them alone because they figured they were possessed by the spirits and you don't want to mess with the spirits because the spirits will come back and bother you um, and, and the, the rationale is sometimes if you act crazy enough people will actually let you do what you want to do in life so you gotta take that with a grain of salt but you know you I, I learned as a teacher sometimes if I really acted crazy it's amazing how cooperative students and other teachers would get because they didn't know where I was coming from but anyway um, what Jushin is is the slow and smooth movement of a series of basic jiu-jitsu movements in a coherent manner uh, one technique flows into the next and and although I'm going to give you some samples here and and I don't have them memorized so someone's gonna have to read them to me as I go through and you'll see what happens and then you're going to get up either with another person or yourself and I'm going to ask you to come up with a sequence of five to ten jujitsu techniques that flow one flows into another okay I am not trying to say you have to do this sequence of techniques or you have to do this sequence of techniques because jujitsu doesn't work that way jujitsu is really whatever doesn't come to mind my students understand the phrase you know it's because if you have to think about what you're gonna do it's too late 
Okay, um, usually there are five to ten techniques in a sequence and there may be several different sequences. So it's quite possible every one of you could come up with a totally different sequence and it, they would all be viable. Yes, sir? Sensei, can those sequences be a uh, throw into different submissions? Um, or throw to throw to throw to throw to throw? You would be moving, okay, there, there are two approaches based on some of the black belts I've talked to. One is you're dealing with one attacker and you're moving him, and I'll actually do this with a person to show you what it's like with a person and then uh, without the person. Uh, be one person, take him through a series of techniques. It may involve submissions, whether you go, to, if you want to go down to the ground, fine, but you've also got to be able to get back up into your ready position when you're finished, okay. Uh, and it's usually easier to deal with one person and go through a series of moves and, and most of the techniques will by their nature would involve uh, joint locks, holds, things of that sort. Maybe some judo throws, I really haven't found that to work too satisfactorily. Uh, mat work, mm -mm, okay, no, um, because it's hard to do that on the ground. Someone will probably think you're having spasms or something, <laughs> or what do you call it? Um, when you go into, uh, what? Convulsions? You'll think you're having convulsions, uh, <laughs> you know, and there's some paramedics for you. Um, karate techniques work to some extent if they're incorporated with other techniques, okay? Um, characteristics, it's based upon traditional jujitsu. Anyone can practice it regardless of their physical condition as long as they can move. Okay. If they're stuck in a wheelchair, they can do the upper body part. Okay. If they're lying down, you can do this stuff lying down. Okay. Uh, so there's really no, the only physical limitation is the position they're in. So that's another nice characteristic. Um, and it's an excellent exercise if you can do it standing up. Okay. It should not stress anything in your body because if you can maintain your balance through the movements, the footwork, like in the morning, the rotation, the turning and all these other things, and you can keep yourself balanced, it should not be stressing any part of your body. Although it's going to give your body exercise, it's going to help you with your flexibility because you're moving around. Uh, why call it Jushin? jushin? Okay. I guess it's a, trans, it's, a, it's a translation or transliteration of gentle spirit. Um, normally there are two ways to practice jiu-jitsu techniques. One is uh, kata no nagi. And any judo person, if they don't know what kata no nagi means, they need to go back to white belt. You know, kata no, uh, may not be, you know, kata no nagi is doing any, uh, actually any technique without finishing up the throw. So if I were to say do koshi nagi, kata no nagi 50 times, come out, come out, go back, okay? At least that's what, you know, Seki would have us do. And then he'd say we look like garbage, do it another 50. Um, the other one is kimi no kata, where you have a series of prearranged forms, and I've explained that already. You know, both of you know what's going to happen. You do a technique, and the other person does a technique, and you go back and forth, and it's, it's very dance light. There's total cooperation. It's totally prearranged. Um, in the 70s and 80s, uh, AJJ, American Jiu Jitsu Federation, used to do, uh, at least in Southern California, used to do kimi no kata tournaments. And they were really nice to watch, particularly the black belt division, because they, the black belts were so good at it. It just, it was just, there were two brothers called the Michael and Tim Lynch, and I got to know both of them. And they were so good at it, they made it into a um, Three Stooges routine. You know, a person would hit and they'd go like this, you know, or, you know, and it just, they had a whole routine. It was, they were, they won, they just kept winning because they had the techniques down beautifully and Anyway, um, and it's also carrying the spirit of jiu-jitsu. So even though some of you may get to an age where you can't do, you know, you can't do Tomonagi anymore, or Hari Maki Komi, or uh, some of these other really neat throws, some of which I don't even teach anymore, um, um, you can still do most, you can still go through the motions of most of the techniques. And as long as you can keep the gears oiled and moving, it's going to work for you in a street situation. Okay, because you know it's, it should be, an, it becomes an automatic reaction. Okay, 
Uh, what does the Jushin logo represent? If you have nothing else to do with your life, you can read that. I'm not going to go into it. Um, there's a lot of detail. Uh, value of Jushin, same benefits as Tai Chi. Um, okay, so I want to switch to page three because I'm not going to read everything to you because I want you to have some exciting reading to have on your own on your way home. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to I need some I need someone to be an uke just just to go through the the first routine here. Okay. Uh, I prefer, prefer not. But. I'm half okay. What? Okay. So what um Okay, so we're going to start. Someone needs to read this routine. You all have these. I don't need to hand you them. How many of you are familiar with this term? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> In sign language, that means loser. Good. Okay. So we're going to start off. This is the way it, what's actually happening. Okay. Cross wrist grab. Okay, cross wrist grab. Clockwise right hand rotation. Push bent arm to the back wrist. Elbow roll to the right. The sternum up in. Uh, reverse into setup for shoulder lock. Rear down. Rotate forward into arm lock with right hand applying a wrist press. Get this back here. Okay. Left middle finger. To nerve and side of side of base of left neck. Okay. 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 That's what it is with another person. Okay. So whatever you come up with has to be connectable to a human being. You have to go through the same movement. So if we do this with without a person, okay, go through the same thing. Okay. Starting in ready position. Okay. Start with wrist grab, clockwise left, right hand rotation. I, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go through this because I think I've got it okay. up here and it going jerkily makes it 27 steps instead of one. Okay. Okay, so what you're doing, you're starting here, it's here, it's, it's here, here, around here, coming around to here, taking the hand down behind, stepping behind, getting the nerve, and if you want, stepping back, and then pushing him away and retreating. That's all it is. Okay? All of you can do this. Okay? The rocket science part is it has it should work with an actual human being. So you don't, you know you, you don't want to come up with one fan and you want to keep control and hold of this person until you are done with them. It's not it's not get the wrist off step away. Although for if if you're teaching this to new people, you might start with well, we're just going to do this. Wave to your friend. Now that you've waved to your friend, Is that wax on or wax on? it's almost wax on, wax on. Once, now that you've waved to your friend, I want you to push away. Okay? Okay, you've pushed away. Now I want you to... I don't know what that's going to be called. Okay? But you can break these down into separate movements for new, newer people and then start putting them together. Okay, and I had come up with, you know, okay, we're going to have different levels of people in Jushin. That, that, you know, you, you know uh, Harold knows 20 sequences of 30 different techniques each. Therefore, he's at a level one, and 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 uh, uh, Stephen only knows five sequences of 10 each. So he's maybe at a level three, you know, and you know, or wh whatever. And I said, you know. I do not want to get involved in another organizational setup. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting too old for this stuff. Um, you know, if, if somewhere down the road some people want to, I don't want to say become anal enough, but some people want to 
do this and really organize it that way, that's fine. But I want this to be a, an exercise that anyone can benefit from. That if, if you want to go out and teach this to a group of people, you can come up with a sequence that works for you. No one's going to say it's wrong because it's all based upon legitimate jujitsu techniques. So obviously it cannot be wrong. This is a win-win situation. Okay. Um, but I don't want something, and let, let me borrow Sher Sherry here. I, I, I don't want something where, okay, grab my wrist. Okay, do another attack. You know, take, take her down, come back to her. I don't want something where it's just single attacks. Okay, now, there is a totally different approach that has come from some other black belt, a couple other black belts, and that is, what if we have multiple attackers? Okay, at that point, then you are doing one technique, getting rid of them, going to another tech. You have to change your angle, you're dealing with another attacker, then you've got to come back, oh, there's another, you've got to now change your, your tachiwasa for another, do a technique to deal with them, you've got another attacker, and so you may be ultimately dealing with f five to ten different attacks in different places in your circle, okay? And I don't know whether that's kosher or not, but at this point in my life, I'm not going to say no. I think going through a series of movements with one person is is more is is more um, what do you call it is more productive in terms of exercise and organizing your thoughts and moving your body than just doing single things with different people and I mean Tai Chi has been fairly successful with going through a whole series you know of moves so why can't Jushin do the same thing you know, so anyway, what, what I'm trying to say is, you know, you, you, you've got a different way of looking at what you know. You've got a different way of teaching it. You can even do this with your regular students in your regular classes if you want to get their move, their, get their moves down slowly. Okay, and it's it's kind of like has has it's I don't want to say it's multifaceted, but be, it can be applied to a bunch of different situations. Have one thing happen today, and other thing hopefully happen within the next week or two. Um, you're going to come out by your lonesome and demonstrate your Jushin routine. Okay. Now, one thing that first name is Vicky, Vicky said is that in in Tai Chi. Every, because all I've been saying is, you know, do this move, a hand throw and go into shoulder lock, you know, and, and there's a lot of foot movement involved and body turning involved, and I'm not, I'm not even touching on that. Although, as part of Jushin, that's part of it as well, because like in Jiu Jitsu, the student has to move their feet, they have to do, move their body. You can't do all this like this and hope that you're gonna stay balanced, be able to do anything, okay? Um, in Tai Chi, Okay, there are two things that Vicky said. Number one, there's an opening move in Tai Chi, something like, you know, like this, or in Karate, it might be like, and in Jiu Jitsu, or Jushin, the opening move, what is the opening move in any Jiu Jitsu technique? Tachi Waza. Whether it be this, or this, or this, you know, or this, you know, it's, you're t that's your starting position. Okay, no? Just supposed to be somebody in the right, uh, but but I. Because it doesn't seem like that. No, no, you don't, and and that's why Seki said you can't walk around the street like this, because people will think you're totally weird. But you can. Right, you're right, and but but he would say this is also an acceptable tachiwaza. Because what's putting me in tachiwaza? My feet. Okay, so you can have your hands at your side, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, my students know, I cannot stand in church this way. I feel exceedingly uncomfortable. I have to go to evening drinks that way. I have to, I have to stand this way because it's, it's by habit from so many years. This is a natural position for me, okay? Um, but if we're about to, if we sense that we are going to be attacked, 
our initial position, I, unless you're attacked from behind or what have you, you're blindfolded walking down the street or what have you, um, your initial position is going to be a tachiwaza. Okay, so that's why I said you need to start in a tachiwaza and end with a tachiwaza. Okay, because that starts and ends your sequence, whatever it is. Okay, um, the other other thing Vicky mentioned that in Tai Chi each move is a separate or each step is a separate what do you call it? Technique. Technique. So if I were to step forward my right hand and change my Tachiwaza that would be okay if I were to pivot back the footwork would be another technique. So you may and we're doing the same thing with our students when we teach them Jiu Jitsu we just don't say this is a technique, that's a technique, that's a technique. Um, we kind of like, rather than one, two, three, four, five, okay, this or this is a one, okay, which is probably more acceptable to jujitsu people. You know, it's a complete movement, okay. Uh, or if, if it's a hit and you block it across and down, Okay, this would be a one. And then back into your ready position. Okay. Or whatever whatever you do. Yeah, whatever you do, it's a one. And and but that's easy for us to understand, but for a student who doesn't know their head from a hole in the wall, it's inconceivable. Because they don't even see the hole because their nose is sticking in the hole. <laughs> in the map. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay, so. Um, yeah, you made a couple of mistakes. Okay. And one of the nice things about doing this is that if you don't have, you know, if, as in Jiu Jitsu, which is what, I forgot which, I think Barry, Harry, Barry, Barry's going to do tomorrow. Who, who's going to do the second? Second chance, yeah, Thomas gave a second chance, is that one of the nice things about being a black belt or brown belt is that you usually have a sufficient repertoire that when you screw up on one thing, you can pretty much automatically go into something else. And unless somebody really knows what you wanted to do, they have no idea that you've made a mistake. Okay, and that's one of the nice things about jujitsu. When you get new students and they, they do techniques backwards, I will always have them continue because one of the nice things about jiu-jitsu is that if you do things backwards, you will, you know, you do your rotation backwards or you grip the opposite way. If you keep moving, odds are you're going to eventually run into another jiu-jitsu technique. And that's one of the nice, that's what, jiu-jitsu is a tremendously forgiving art, okay? It forgives those people who attack you. Uh, <laughs> <dude. laughs> I'm sorry you hurt yourself. Let me help you some more. Um, and, and who else used the word help? You used it today? Yeah. Uh, Seki used that, yeah, Seki used that term a lot. You, you don't fight your attacker, you help them, okay? Because there, there is a very strong philosophy of nonviolence in jiu-jitsu, okay? And, and part of that concept of I'm helping this person helps you deal psychologically with the fact that this person is trying to commit a violent act upon you and you're not going to resort to violence to protect yourself, you're going to help them. It's it's how you think. Okay. Um, I want to give out just one more handout, and and this one, you know, anything I'm giving you is almost free.